I didn't know you'd been promoted. You look oh. like something important in the army or something now. Oh, yes. Listen, Very welcome well. to both of you. Thanks for that great opener. And Thank Susie, you. an official welcome. Thank you. We almost didn't come out, actually. We were, we chatting, were chatting, away back there. <laughs> chatting away back there. What well, were you talking about? About star signs and our differences. It went a bit further. <laughs> actually, but we can't get into that well, now. Well, we better keep off of that in that case. Quite rude, actually. Good chat. <laughs> right. How did you actually get started? I've known you since you were about nine or ten on Young yeah, Talent yeah. Time. Um, but uh, what about the very start? Were you... I, I started on a show called Brian and the Juniors. Brian and the Juniors yes. with Brian Naylor, right? Yeah, and... Um, Whose idea was it, was it about... to go on that? Yours or mine? Mine, mine. It was always mine. I think it was a <clears throat> wonderful distraction for me to sing. You know what I mean? It's a great distraction. What, you, you had a lot of energy, did you, as a kid? I was neurotic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were no. talking about. Yeah, we were. I know, I was really... Were you the sort of kid you hoped you wouldn't have yourself? Yes. <laughs> and everyone else prayed for me too. <laughs> no, but I was really hyperactive. Things haven't changed a great deal. But, um, well, I you live with it now, though. Yeah, yeah. You but what, what sort of outlet well, you, did you, you have? Well, you direct it better, you know. You learn to sort of channel it in better ways. What sort of outlet did you have for it in those days? Did they, say, play sport or do ballet or what? No, I used to listen to uh, My Fair Lady and uh, Carousel... On the, on the albums at home, and the lounge room was mine. No one came in, and it was like, you know, I, I, what's that song? Um, when I marry Mrs. Snow, <laughs> Snow, what Mr. Snow is like. And, I, you know, that was my world in the lounge room, just A, a total fantasy yeah, world with the records on, yeah. What, dancing and singing the whole routine? Mm, oh, yeah. Your dad, I heard you uh, say on radio the other day, was uh, a musician himself. He still plays now. He still plays now and does yeah. your numbers. He always oh, so Can you imagine it? <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing if you, you go along to one of his. He's got one of those big, huge organs that. That. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what this conversation backstage was all about. <laughs> what a great innocent line that was. Okay. <laughs> anyway, he has, and um, it's got, he puts a little tape in. It's got all the bits of just the drum beats and everything. And he puts right. in like a tape. Some of my hits and oh, plays yeah. along. So embarrassing. <laughs> and does he say things like, "Here's a song my daughter made yes, famous"? Yes, he does do all mm. that. Yeah. yeah. And whenever we're if we're anywhere where there's a band, he always says the band play if you knew Susie, and I always have to get up and dance with her. <laughs> all right. Well, you, you, you left school when you were 14. Was that to go into show business? Yes, I started my first band when I was 14. And then in that summer break, you, see, you have that little break and you're supposed to go back. We were in New York. And um, I didn't want to go back to school. This is actually true. I called my father on the phone and I said, I absolutely love it, Dad. I don't want to go back to school. Can I stay on the road? Right. And there was a big pregnant pause and he said, <laughs> not a great line, a big, <laughs> big pregnant, pregnant pause. <laughs> and he says, um, is there anything I can say to change your mind? And I said, no. And he went, click. And he hung up the phone. Well, who was in the band with you? It was family? me and my sisters. But there, that was a big moment of decision for me because he was actually cutting the lifeline. He was saying, okay. Right. You're you know, out there so. by yourself. Yeah. Earn a living. Yeah. yeah. And I did. Actually, when you look back at it, you were the pioneer rocker, the pioneer woman rocker. And, and nowadays, I mean, we've had, even this year, we've had two groups in the show, and most of them have had one or two women in there. Oh, it's nothing unusual anymore. Nothing at all. No. No. It was shock therapy the first time. I mean... It, you know, was to, to see, I remember people would like turn on the TV and be horrified on one of the shows in England, like this girl with these big sweaty men and this bass guitar, and nobody had ever, ever seen that before. Yeah. But how, it's just not unusual anymore. You'd Like you say, you see it in every group. Now. Yeah, you, you really started the whole thing going. But how long since 14 and that first band going to Detroit before you got your first hit? Oh, 64 to 73. Long time. Yeah. That's, mm. it, it is a, and you never, never even get to where you're going. That's, I don't know if you agree, but that's what I like about the business. You think you're getting good, and every year you see yourself, you hope, getting better and better and better. You're always learning more and more. Yeah, yeah. it's one, yeah, yeah, your brain just... Yeah, somebody always says to me, where are you going? I always say, well, I haven't started yet, because that's how I feel inside. Yeah. Each new thing is like a great thrill. Yeah. Well, well, of course, your music was being different, because I think mainly because you were probably forced into it. Yeah, I, mean, I was just... Yeah, young was Teletown was middle of the road, know, wasn't it? Uh, starting in a band at 14, I would have... You know, I would have loved to have had that because Young Talent Time, though it was great training and discipline and all that, you were very sort of uh, inhibited. Well, you became inhibited mm. and you had to sing with eight kids and you had to dress very much the same. And it was when I uh, left Young Talent Time, I was terrified because I didn't know what my style was mm. at all. I had none. I had Young Talent Times. I had a voice that matched in with eight other kids. Right. And when you had it, training. I had the training, yeah. And yeah. it's like, 
only now that I sort of feel, like the last few years, that I feel that I can let go a bit, you know, find my own personality in my work. What I find interesting is, as you're talking about when you were a kid, the thing of getting into the lounge room, closing the door and acting out your fantasies. Mm -hmm. Now, that's wonderful until you're about 12 or 13. But once you start to become an adolescent, and by that time it was sort of your living, it was your career, Yes, unexpectedly uh, that, it becomes unexpected. a career. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You, it's it's fun, and then all of a sudden it's a job. And then you're going through all that thing of growing up and everything mm -hmm. else and meeting boys and the whole trauma. Mm. Would you rather have what's I called didn't get to whatever meet a normal boy is? <laughs> <No, laughs> I usually met men because yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't working with uh, boys or girls. I was, I w and I wasn't, con you know, I wasn't socialising with boys or girls, that I was socialising with adult, adults. That really. is one thing you miss, isn't it? Yeah. If, if you say if you miss anything at all, that is probably yeah, the only thing. I never thing. went parking until a few years ago. Yeah. And I didn't know what... Do you mean drive-in no, movies? Is yeah, I never thing? did yeah. any of that. Great you know? um, <laughs> so <laughs> well, uh, did, did, did you know what I mean? The more of it, you know what I mean? Did you get yeah. to meet boys, though, or was it uh, men? No, they were men. I mean, you, really? you, yeah, the, the boys. In fact, my first boyfriend, when he saw me on stage the first time, he sort of, he got annoyed because like everybody was looking at all that and I come off and he said to me, uh, yeah, that's a real cute hobby. <laughs> Out the window he went. That was it. In other words, it was uh, marry me. That was the wrong down. thing to say. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, marry me. Did you get that sort of thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Americans are obviously more fortunate. But, uh, but now the, the interesting thing, and I know you've got a lot you can talk about together, but you both have two small children now. Yes. And you've got yours on the road with you. Yes. And uh, the eldest is four? Two and a half two and, and a half. four and a half months. Four and a half months, mm -hmm. right. And how often can you tour with them? Because you tour a great deal of the year. Well, they go everywhere with me. Everywhere. Is that a big decision? It, it's no, not a big, it's the only decision. I think um, it's Did a you try it the other way? I tried it for five days. Um, <laughs> I really stuck it out. I, um, I went up north in England and I was just hitting the whiskey bottle and... Yeah. I mean, I usually don't touch the stuff. <laughs> You just keep it in case of accident. Yeah. She's got a crate of it. She must be expecting a huge accident. <laughs> but it, it makes a big difference having them on the road with you. It's a lesser it? of two evils. Mm. You know, you think, oh, is it fair to drag them around to the hotels and this and that? But then I think, well, wait a minute. What, what's better, to have them at home with some stranger? Yeah. Even, even if you're, well, I mean, I have a full-time nanny. That's, she's, like, fantastic with them. But she's not their mother and dad. And they, they need to be with me yeah. and my husband. And you need them. Oh, Who? God, do yeah. I ever. Well, who looks after who, do you reckon? The kids look after you? I mean, I'm it's talking nice, emotionally or... Well, uh, I think it's a, it's a, a blend. Yeah. You know, mm. it's a good blend. But, um, I mean, I don't go on the road. Um, I moved to Sydney so that I wouldn't be away f from the children because Sydney's where I seem to work most mostly. Right. But, I mean, Susie's... as When she says going on the road, I mean, that's like around the world. I don't do any of that. No. So I, I really wouldn't know what that's like, except that I know what it's like to be away from your children. And um, I know what it's like to say I'm going away for two days or just go out for work. I mean, it's like, it's not that much different from any parent. And maybe we're luckier, a lot luckier, because I can plan and say, um, okay, look, mum works, I'm gonna be working every night and I'm gonna have to sleep in because I'm gonna be very tired and this is gonna go on for three weeks, kids. And that, but then after that, I can say to them, okay, and I plan then but it's to a spend a week with you. Yes. Um, just us. You and know? that and, week is great. And if you're working it? nine to five, all you've really got is before breakfast, um, bef after work, before dinner, and on the weekends, and you're tired. Whereas, you know, I can sort of plan mm. time with the kids. So right. isn't that so quality of time, as you say, very, yeah, very important. Is, I think it's important. Uh, what sort of a concept do you think your kids will grow up with of the rock and roll world? One a glamour? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm being a straight man here. I think I know That's the answer. Yeah, right. I have I have never ever seen the glamour of this business. <laughs> I think I did once when I got a case of champagne from the record company when we first hit number one. Oh, payola. And for, <laughs> and, for, and for those two weeks, I thought I was really terrific, and then all of a sudden, I came crashing down to earth and worked out I was still me. Um, my kids will have a real, real good viewpoint of the rock and roll business. Yeah. My dad, my dad had a great line he said to me, which is absolutely true. <laughs> He said, um, all right, Susie, you're going to show business full time. He said, one thing I already remember, show business is 90% bullshit and the other 10% you can believe. Now, that's ex exactly spot on it is. <laughs> we've been, we've been going for 10 guess. minutes, so I don't know where we are. <laughs> Listen, I'd like to thank you both for chatting anyway. Debbie, thanks for a great thank opening. You, uh, good luck with Cats when you yeah, start in, and I hope we see you before. And Susie, we'll catch up with you later. Would you back? Thank you. Susie Quattro, Debbie Byrne.